Well, it's uh, many hours since I started talking here about this long story from the ancient world. And it's appropriate we finish in this final section on what we can do about it and how we can bring this manipulation to an end and bring freedom, true freedom, to this planet for the first time in literally thousands of years. And therefore, it's hardly surprising that it's this information that I'm going to be talking about now that has been most suppressed and most fiercely suppressed of all. Because if we realize who we really are and the nature of our true power to control our own destiny and control the direction of our lives, then the ability of a few to control the many becomes impossible. This is why we've had such emphasis over these thousands of years on creating religions and other prisons of the mind which have divorced us and kept us apart from the, the knowledge that would set us free. And we really come to another opposame, religion and science. As I document in my books, the same secret societies that created religion, all of them, were the same that created what we call science, this idea excuse me if I insult your intelligence, that this world is all there is and we come from oblivion and after a period in um, awakened consciousness of a few seconds or a hundred years, we go back to oblivion. Get letters after your name for coming up for that, you know, it's amazing. And a big salary. Now these two things appear to be opposites. One saying God and all this stuff, and you must do what God says. And this one saying there is no God and it's kind of, you're just a cosmic accident, darling. They have one, there are many things in common, they have one key thing in common. They're both saying that control of our lives is not here, it's out here somewhere. What science is saying is always just a random accident, mate. Just, just your luck. And over here in religion, it's saying, well, yeah, your destiny is controlled by uh, whether you serve and do what God says. Oh, by the way, me and my long frock and nice collar, I know what God wants, so do what I tell you and you'll be fine, darling. And so... Religion was used for so long, and still is used massively, to control people and shut their minds off from the reality of who they are and the nature of their true power, life itself indeed. And when, particularly during the last couple of centuries, people began in increasing numbers not to buy that little scam, along came this world is all there is science to pick them up. And the idea of both, and indeed the creators of both, were high initiates of the secret society and mystery school network who knew that both versions of life were a load of old crap. If we don't buy either, we can see what they're trying to keep us from. We are given the choice of being controlled by God or being basically a cosmic accident, okay? What we are not given the choice to see from early in our lives, unless we have enlightened parents, is that we are not a physical body and we are not um, just a, uh, a, an entity that lives in a physical world. We are everything that exists. Increasingly open-minded science, and my goodness me, it's about time we had some of that, is starting to um, confirm what mystics and people that talk about this have been saying for thousands of years that everything that exists in the whole of creation in this dimension and others is the same energy in different states of being. And the vibrational state of that energy decides what that energy will manifest as. And therefore, we are not the physical body. That is our genetic spacesuit through which we experience this world. What we are is multidimensional consciousness that animates that body. And the question is, how much of that consciousness are we going to access? A little bit or massive amounts of it? We have a, a connection between our spiritual energy self and our physical self, which is called the chakra system. It comes from a Sanskrit uh, word meaning... Um, wheels of light, and the Sanskrit language comes from the Aryan race that came out of the Caucasus Mountains. You know the score by now. Now, what these chakra vortexes do, and there's seven main ones, but many others, is that they interpenetrate our levels of being. So we have a mental level, which is an energy field. It's a frequency range. That's our rational thought, as they call it. We have an emotional level, 
which is another frequency range. We have a spiritual level, which is the higher dimensions of ourselves. And these levels are interpenetrated by these chakra vortexes, these wheels of light. And therefore, an imbalance on one level is through this vortex system transferred to other levels. This is why when we get very emotionally stressed, the first thing that stops happening is we stop thinking straight. We stop thinking straight because the imbalance on the emotional level has been transferred to the mental level and bang, 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 we go. Now, if this imbalance goes on, this emotional imbalance, it's transferred eventually to the lowest level of this system, which is the physical level. And it manifests in the physical body as a chemical reaction. Now, it's at this point that modern medicine comes in with its drugs and scalpels at the point of the chemical reaction. Therefore, it is treating the symptom of the energy imbalance, the emotional imbalance, not the cause. And I remember um, where I lived on the Isle of Wight, a little island off the south coast of England, uh, the doctor's practice there sent out a letter to everybody in, who was um, uh, in that practice, the patients and stuff. And it kind of encapsulates the whole thing magnificently. It said, patients are reminded that uh, appointments with the doctor are for five minutes only, and this is not a time to discuss your other problems. What has been so massively missed is there are other problems creating the emotional imbalance and distress that are causing the physical illness. So if you look at the human entity as a whole, you're looking at a very different vision of who we are and health and every other aspect of life than if you think that we're just a physical body. And these um, uh, chakra vortexes are drawing in, particularly what they call the base chakra, vast amounts of energy which we can create with in ways that I'll come to in a second. The more these chakra vortexes are closed down, the less energy they're drawing in, the less energy we have to work with and create with. And so from this high level of knowledge that I've been talking about over thousands of years at the peak of this brotherhood network, they understand these things. And so much of the manipulation of human emotion and human thinking, human perception and human attitudes has been designed to close these vortexes down so we access a fraction of multidimensional infinity, this infinite mind that we're part of. There was an American comedian called Bill Hicks, um, great guy, died in 1994, who summed up this whole concept of life I'm talking about in this way because he was a very bright man. He said, matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. We're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is just a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. And that's the key. What we imagine ourselves to be is what we physically create. So if we can be manipulated to imagine ourselves as ordinary then we'll create ordinary lives. When the penny drops that we are all extraordinary, we live extraordinary lives, and this manipulation is over. We're like droplets of water in an ocean of consciousness. We're individual to an extent, just like droplets of water are individual. You can hold one in your hand. But those droplets together make up the ocean. Without the droplets, there is no ocean. It's the same with this infinite energy mind, we call creation, God, whatever you want to call it. Call it Ethel. I'm not bothered. We are not part of that infinity. We are that infinity. If we open ourselves up to reconnect with it. And this is where we come back to the eggshell. Because most people are manipulated through fear and, and, and sense of limitation to shut off from that infinity. And all its infinite Wisdom, love, understanding that is available to be tapped any time because it's us. Wherever you stand in infinity, you are at the center of infinity. So everything that exists is everything that exists. I am everything that exists. So are you. The more you realize that, the more you open up to the full infinity of who you are. Your life transformed. Your vision of yourself is transformed. Your vision of everything is transformed. The more you see yourself as just an individual, ordinary little man and woman in the street, i got no power, mate, what can I do? Once you do that, you are shutting yourself off from the infinity of who you are, and you become a fraction of what you are. And then you are 
able to be controlled, but only then, which is why this understanding has been so suppressed. That's where most people live their lives. In a sense of, I can't, mate, I could never, mate, all the best things in life happen to someone else, mate, or oh, what can I do? And when we're there, piece of cake, manipulator in one hand while having a cup of tea in another. When we're here, we're a manipulator's nightmare, breaking the eggshell, breaking the sense of limitation, breaking the sense of fear, the fear of what other people think of us. How many people watching this video now would love to say something, but they think, oh, God, what will my mother say? Oh, what will they think of me? Oh, you'd love to do something in your life. And you say, oh, well, what will they think? I couldn't give a damn what they think. They have a right to think what they like, but so do you and so do I. We forgot that. And once we start believing that because people are different uh, to us, they must be wrong, then we're in a situation where whoever sets the norms in society runs the world. Because we police each other, like I said right at the start of this journey we'd be both been on and all been on in the last few hours. Cracking the eggshell, stepping out of the fear of what other people think of us, being who we are, speaking our truth, living our uniqueness. That is the revolution. It's not guns and bombs and meeting violence with violence and meeting anger with anger. What's the point? You get twice the anger, twice the violence. My goodness me, we've moved on, haven't we? The way out of this is the ultimate revolution. It's to be who we are and not what someone else tells us we should be.